Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and I wanted to show you some stuff with the new Rhino 7 work in progress. So the Rhino 7 work in progress has a suite of tools called SubD and this stands for Subdivision Surfaces. So we have a poly surface here, standard NURBS poly surface here, and I want to convert it to a subdivision surface. So we can start with a command called quad remesh and this will make a quad mesh out of whatever you select and it becomes an interim step for creating a sub D object. So you can see the quads, each polygon will be four sided so that's called a quad and detect hard edges is on so it looks at the edges of the existing poly surface. If I hide the um, input poly surface, you can see we have a lot of small patches. So each one of these faces would become a face in the sub D surface. Uh, I'll show you what that would look like. And if I turn off detect hard edges, you can see that everything would be rounded. And in fact, if you convert to sub D directly in the quad remesh panel, uh, it will make a lot of faces. So I prefer to say detect hard edges and then decrease the number of quads that it will make. So to a certain point you won't lose too much of the shape but the less faces you have the easier it will be to directly edit the shape. Uh, if you look down at the bottom of the mug the, the bottom does not have a center line in the x-axis so I'm going to turn on symmetry here for the x-axis to make that a little bit easier to edit. And I still have convert to sub D checked, but detect hard edges is still on. And I'll say OK. And then I'm going to hide this poly surface. Now, even though we had checked to create a sub D, but we had hard edges still on, this is a sub D object. But these hard edges are called creases. So the first thing I'll do uh, after creating this sub D is remove creases. And I'll drag a fence selection over all the hard edges, and you can see what we get. So if you just want to round all the edges, that's a fast way to go about it. Uh, but here we're going to um, explore a couple other options that we have here. So if you do Control shift click you get a sub-object. And that can be edges, vertices, or faces. If you Control shift double click you get an edge loop. And if you delete those edge loops, you simplify the structure of the sub D. All right, and you can take that edge loop and you can drag these around and change the way the shape is like that. If you want to move an edge loop, so double click, control shift double click. If you want to move this edge loop you can use slide edge and I'll hold down alt so that I temporarily toggle off my O snaps and you can scale these edge loops as well so if I want to sculpt the edge of the lip to the mug there. So again if I want to delete edge loops I can do that. If you want to insert an edge loop the command is not an icon yet in the sub D toolbar, but the command name is insert edge, and it has some options in the command line. I'm going to insert a full edge loop, and you can see how having another edge loop here tightens up the corner right there. Another really nice thing to utilize here, since we're doing a lot of control shift and selection to get sub objects, is to save these named selections. So if I go over to the Name Selections panel, which is available through the right-click menu of any of the panels, I can save this. I'll name this one Handle. And now when I deselect, I have the ability to go back and select this again. If you delete objects or create more uh, sub-objects, it won't necessarily um, update the named selection. So you might have to delete it and make a new one. But on the fly, it is very useful for coming back in and changing the way the geometry is structured. All right, let's just make a couple more edits here. 
change the shape. Now you can also sub object select faces and use these extrude handles on the gumball to create geometry. So if you want to go ahead and add geometry, you can do it that way. If you have an edge that needs to be a hard edge for say a shut off um, might be for the purposes of glazing in this case, you could add a crease for just that. Something along those lines. If you want to combine faces together, uh, what you can do is delete either an edge or a vertices. So again, control shift click. If I delete right there, I make a multi-sided face within the sub D. If I sub object select multiple faces, you can also use the merge faces command to combine them into one multi-sided face in the sub D. If you have a hole like this, you can fill it with the fill command. And this doesn't exist as an icon yet in the sub D toolbar, but it has a number of options that allow you to fill any hole. If you'd like to make, let's say we want to make some strange loop right here in the bottom. I'm going to extrude up a number of times, something like this. And if I make a hole right there, like that, by sub-object selecting and deleting those faces, I can then take a hole with the same number of edges. So this is going to be really clean. So I deleted two faces there, two faces there. And you can use bridge to select these two holes and join them at the same time. And you've got a number of um, options here, segments. So if you wanted more control, more divisions in here, you could change segments. Um, and your smoothness is going to be uh, useful if the two holes are planar with one another. Then you can make handles and such. All right, so very pretty little addition to the handle there. Maybe it'll be like a, a, a pinky grabber. <laughs> Anyways, these are um, these are some of the tools in the new Rhino 7 work in progress. I hope you found this interesting. And um, if you do need to make a poly surface, you can use the command to NURBS in order to convert them. And there's the icon right there. And the command is two NURBS and it'll take every face in the sub D and turn it into a separate surface but if you need to get out as IGIS or STEP um, that's your road to it. Uh, so I hope that's been useful to see and um, try the Rhino 7 whip uh, using the link in this post. Thanks.